afternoon once again. Welcome to another Sila moment. Hard to believe September is almost gone already. Uh, and something called Family Fun Night is just around the corner here in our church on October 31st. We pray uh, that all of you will come out and attend and uh, just have a beautiful evening. It's on a Sunday, so what a beautiful day the Lord's Day is going to be on that day to not only come, worship Him in His house, but then come back to His property so we can continue to praise and uh, and adore his name. So we just pray uh, that you enjoy um, uh, next month uh, on October 31st. Uh, but for now, as we have paused to um, go into uh, the Lord's presence uh, with our Sila moment, we're going to continue and finish up uh, our study with uh, Saul and the conversion from Saul, how God um, has chosen him, chosen him, the one who was persecuting his children, chosen him uh, to be the one uh, to feed his sheep, to um, uh, plant uh, churches, and, and to do just great things for the Lord. What a God, what a God we serve. All this to build up, brothers and sisters, our faith in our Lord, for he can do all things um, to, for, through Christ who gives us uh, our strength. And so we just thank him so much for that. So before we begin and wrap up, um, Acts in uh, um, Acts 9, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, that we can pause in whatever we're doing right now uh, to seek you, to know you more. That is your desire for us, Father, is to do just that. And so we just thank you. We pray, Father, that our effort to do just that, to, to stop and to pray and to think of you and to meditate on you and your word to transform us is pleasing to you, Father, for you are so worthy. Uh, so be with us now as we go into your word to learn more of you, to learn more of your decision to choose this man, Saul, to do great things for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's continue on. Again, we are in Acts 9, um, and we're going to be uh, resuming in verse uh, 15. But the Lord said, the Lord said to uh, Aeneas, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument. Chosen. He chooses you. He chooses me, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, to serve him mightily. All we have to do is say yes to his call and just hang on and enjoy the ride. We just pray. Can we just thank God for, for him choosing us, for him choosing us uh, to be his son, to be his daughter, for him to choose us to serve him, for him to choose us, um, to bless us and to keep us. Love that from, from God. For he is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and the kings, as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Aeneas went and found Saul, just as the Lord gave him the vision. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. If that doesn't infuse in, in, in Saul, that he's already seen him, he's already heard his voice physically, and now the healing that's going to take place, God is just giving him a message to say, now you're mine and you're going to be used for my will to be done. And I got to believe that this exercise right here um, was not a coincidence. It's really to get his child's attention to know we got to go about my business now. And verse 18 tells us, instantly something like scales fell, from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food, and he regained his strength. To do what? Let's read on. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days, and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues, saying he is indeed the Son of God, the same person who was dragging believers out, men and children from their home for believing in God, now he is praising God. Indeed, he is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed. Part of God's divine plan. I would be amazed too. Wish we were there. Isn't this the same man who caused such devastation 
among Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, they asked. And didn't he come here to arrest them and to take them in chains to the leading priests? Saul's preachings became more and more powerful. And the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. Praise God. After a while, some of the Jews plotted against to kill him. And here's where God's protection is because once we are in God's will, nothing can stop us, brothers and sisters. And so here we are again. Saul knew this because he was on the other side in terms of persecuting, in terms of plotting, in terms of killing. But they were watching for him day and night and the, at the city gate so they could murder him. But Saul was told about their plot. I wonder, I wonder who told them about their plot. But the ones that he is using to tell Saul, who told them? It's got to believe it. Got to believe that that is is God right there in His sovereignty and His protection. So during the night, some of the other believers lowered him in a large basket through an opening in the city wall. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he truly became a believer. Then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had seen the Lord. On the way to Damascus, and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. And he also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. Who else could have done this? It just brings glory and honor to our Lord. So Saul stayed with the apostles and went all around Jerusalem with them, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. He debated with some Greek speaking Jews. But they tried to murder him. When the believers heard about this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus, his hometown. Again, provision and protection over him all. And then what's the result of God's grace here? What is the result of all that Saul is doing now preaching the word of the Lord? What is the result? Brothers and sisters, in verse 31, the church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria. And it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord and with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. It also grew in numbers. He did this all through a man who hated him, who despised him. He used him to grow in numbers encouragement in the Holy Spirit throughout the land. Brothers and sisters, what he did here, what more, what else can't he do for you and for me? What else? Our faith needs to be dependent upon him. Draw closer in the word. Go to him in prayer each and every day. Fellowship with one another. Let's encourage one another. In all our ways, for he is good and he is worthy of all praise. For he is our shepherd and we have all that we need. He lets us rest in green meadows. He leads us besides peaceful streams. He renews our strength. He guides us along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even though we walk through the darkest valley, we shall not be afraid because he is close beside us. His rod and his staff, they protect and they comfort us. He prepares a feast For us in the presence of our enemies, he anoints our head with oil. Our cup overflows with his blessings. It's his desire and surely his goodness and unfailing love will continue to pursue us for all our days. And we shall dwell. We've made the decision to dwell in the house of the Lord to continue to pursue him forever and ever. Selah. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss the video. See you next time.